Duffs versus Flying Elvises. What crap this was. <laughs> First of all... You know- you know what's funny, though, Vinny? If you can get past the gimmicks of the Dups and the Flying Elvises... They're really talented. They're, it's not bad wrestling. No. It's like you take four talented guys that can have a good match, and it's like, okay, well, how can we make this shit? Well, we're going to make two of these guys, you know, you know, inbred blokes that, uh, you know, fuck their cousin. And then the other guys are like, you know, they dress up as Elvis, and they fucking fly. For, for God only knows what reason they fly. I don't even know. And... Uh, uh, you know, we'll just make the whole thing shit when it could actually be good. Yeah, I, I mean, stand up as Trevor Murdoch. He's been doing this for twenty years now. He lasted because he's good. I don't know what the hell ever happened to Bo Dup. You watch me think this is a very big, very physically gifted person, and the the, the gimmick the is awful. Is, but he's not boring. The bigger question is what happened to Sonny Siaki? That guy was awesome. I don't know that either. Um, so they're doing this match. First of all, fifteen minutes of TV time went by between matches and the match before this only went two minutes so we had not seen a lot of wrestling here in this total non-stop action so doing this match i have no idea who the heels are i have no idea who the baby faces are i have no idea because they're 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 doing heel spots like distracting the ref and, and, and trying to I bring actually pants. think that the dubs are supposed to be baby faces they got a hot yeah. tag. <laughs> yeah. I can't even see it with a straight face. I think they're supposed to be baby faces. But there was also a point where Bo was being pinned, and so stand up distracts the referee. And when I say distract, I really mean, I'm not making this up, he grabs him in a standing guillotine. Not a DQ! He has the referee in a front face lock. It's not a DQ. So they're doing some stuff. Mortimer Plumtree is out there just being a, a parody of a wrestling annou- uh, uh, manager. And uh, somewhere in here, Estrada tries to do, it's like a, a, a lion salt, but he does a half turn and turns into a 450. But he under-rotates and spikes his own head into Stan's chest. Oh. No, I don't think it's supposed to be a 450. I think it's supposed to be a lion salt into a senton. Senton. Yeah, Re- still. Regardless, he, uh, he uh, spiked, it looked like he broke his neck and he got the pin. He, apparently he's alive. Five minutes of crap, I wrote here. Mm. And then we suddenly go backstage... And Jerry Lynn and AJ, who, as you noted, in the opener, there was, like, some mild tension. Suddenly, they are having the backstage brawl to end all backstage brawls. They're just beating the shit out of each other. And I don't know why, but it was great. And uh, Lynn well, wins the fight. Well, because Jerry gave him a pile driver on a box and then told him to celebrate now, you glory hound. That's right. So, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, they just got together. They've already broken up. It's fucking stupid. And they're the tag team champions. But, I mean, they had a hell of a brawl. Brawl was awesome. give them that. Why you would turn Jerry Lynn, one of the nicest guys on the planet, heel already? I have no earthly idea. But uh, they did. Because they're stupid. Which leads us, by the way, to uh, the Ken Shamrock-Omori match, okay? okay? So, it's Ken Shamrock, the champion. And uh, Omori, from the Orient, as they say. And they've got uh, former multi-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion Harley Race there at ringside. And suddenly, in the middle of this fucking atrocious show, we have two men in black boots and black trunks having a fucking Japanese-style wrestling match in the middle of a wrestling ring. And uh, regardless of what Vince McMahon might think, wrestling fans actually like professional wrestling. Uh, And so they're into the match, and they're cheering for it. And Mike today says, you know, the Japanese magazines wrote many stories last week about this upcoming NWA World Heavyweight Championship match between Ken Shamrock and Omori. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, fucking look at this, dude. It's like the Japanese press was writing about NWA TNA, because I don't doubt today. I'm sure it's true. You know, Weekly Gong. You know, they're writing this story, or Tokyo Sports, about this this big NWA World Championship match with former UFC fighter and WWF wrestler and now... You know, NWA World Champion Ken Shamrock defending that title, the title held by Harley Race and the Funks and, you know, God only knows who else against Omori. And they go, I don't know, six, seven exciting minutes. Eight minutes. And you liked it more than I did. And Jeff fucking Jarrett hits the ring. And he attacks both men for the disqualification. And then he takes a steel chair. 
and he began hitting everybody in the fucking head with this chair, including Harley Race, yeah. who uh, for about uh, the previous two decades had had a completely fucked up neck, and uh, God only knows what else. He gave this guy the hardest, full-on, unprotected chair shot to the head, and he's just smashing these fuckers with his chair, and I was like, I'm just dying over here. I am dying. Like... Don't give me that bullshit about we don't know about fucking concussions. Jeff Jarrett was there in WCW when Bret Hart got super kicked by Goldberg. And then, you know, a week or two later, he had that hardcore match where Terry Funk hit him in the head with 8,000 fucking weapons. And he had to retire because of multiple concussions. And he ended up having a stroke and all that shit. We all knew how bad this was. And what, what they're doing, fucking whacking people in the head with these chairs, I got no idea. But at this point, I'm like, why are we doing this? Why, why are we watching this? Other than we have at least somewhat committed to it. But uh, this was complete trash, is what this was. So as noted, you liked the actual wrestling world than I did. They, I mean, they tried hard. The, the technique was fine, but it's, it's two guys, as you noted, in black trunks, exchanging holds. The crowd has never really been that into Shamrock. They, the, the NWA TNA fans had no idea who Amori was. I know he'd been wrestling for a decade. They didn't care. The crowd sweetening, really from here until the end of the show, was beyond out of control. So I'm watching the show on my computer. I got my notes in one window and the show in another. And I hear this buzzing. And I thought I had some other window open. I'm going through things. Do I have some other app or program? Is some, some ad kicking? It's atrocious crowd sweetening. It's incredibly loud. It doesn't really sound like a crowd. It doesn't sound like it's recorded in the same building there. But it's the only noise anyone's making. And if you look at the fans, they're all just sitting there f- trying to stay awake. They don't care about any of this wrestling stuff. They don't care about the, the, this, uh, the, 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 these fighters. They want to see foot dives. I thought this match had good heat. Am I the only one? I thought the match was pretty darn good, actually. Mm. The crowd was, Vinny's right, there was a ton of crowd sweetening on it. Shamrock uh, got beat up by Malice earlier. But he came down to the ring for this match like nothing had happened. He was selling zero. He was coming down like he was regular Ken Shamrock. And about two minutes into this match, I literally wrote down, I'm guessing this will end in a DQ from Jarrett. And yeah. sure enough, we'll look at that. Also, you know, that Harley Race shot, that guy was 59 years old. Yeah. And he... A hard 59 years, by the way. Yeah. Does not deserve any of that. <sighs> Unforgivable. Yeah. Backstage, Goldie Locks tries to interview Jerry Lynn, who responds by offering to let her suck his dick. Uh, and immediately then, Jim Mitchell steps in, calls Goldie the whore of Babylon. Now, for some reason, they're mad at Jarrett. And I got no idea why. And they, they're they threatening him, threatening to cut Goldie Locks' smirk off like it's all her fault. There is random grunting throughout this entire segment. Goldie leaves to see what's up, and she finds Bill Barron's tied up with F.U. on his gut. How many authority figures are in DNA? There's like at least three, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. Miller, I, I thought race. I thought race? all the grunt Fargo. That's right. I thought all the grunting and groaning was going to lead to the uh, little person in the trash can. Yeah, if we would just get it out of the way. It would have been nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yes. that- fucking Bill Barron's tied up with Fu on his chest. My God, where what is this leading to? I mean, God. I don't even want to know. I I, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.